Welcome back fantasy moto fans to the Pulp MX Fantasy Show. I'm Donnie from Roto Moto. In this video, I have five riders I want you to look at when making your picks for the Oakland 2022, tips for the FFL, weather report, race day schedule, and an early look at what my team could be come Saturday night. And stick around to the end to find out how you could win an autographed race used number plate for one of your favorite riders. But first, as always, we look at some stats and info from last week at Anaheim 1. A massive 20,568 players set a valid lineup for the first round, almost double the amount of players from the final round of the 2021 Supercross season. The Champ League fell just short of reaching 10,000 players for the very first time, clocking in at 9,682. The perfect team for the night was a very formidable 308 points led by two 52 scores in the 250 class and the wherewithal to pick the correct negative handicap in the 450s. Add 30 points with two FFLs and the highest possible team this weekend was 338. The most popular team, the sum of the highest picked trends, was only 217 with the number one most picked rider missing the main entirely. Vince Freezy does what he does and nailed every single start of the night, but no one picked him. Only 3.8% of the 6,000 people who picked the 250 FFL had Vince on their team, but Roxon was an easy pick and rewarded those players with a cool 15 points on top of their team. The median championship team starts off at just 184 for the season, meaning if you scored 185 or more, you did better than half the paying field. Big loser of the weekend was Carson Brown and everyone who picked him, including this guy, almost half of the entire field had that zero on their team. And in fact, a total of 155% worth of pick trend scored zero points meaning that more than half the teams had a double zero to start the season, again, including this guy. New for 2022 is the expert standings, and I'm throwing myself in here because I make the videos and they can't stop me from doing it. The combined 2021 standings had JT with a commanding lead, followed by myself, then Dan, Steve, and Paul bringing up the rear, but the entire hierarchy got flipped on its head in week one with habitual gambler Dan Truman clocking in at just above average for the win, and JT with a very uncharacteristic little stinker in the rear. Every single one of us got bit by that Carson Brown, Derek Kelly, Wombo combo. The ins and outs list grows slightly this week with Colt Nichols out for likely the entire Supercross season after having surgery on both arms after that devastating crash in the whoops at A1. Angelique Swole will miss at least one round after suffering concussion-like symptoms from a crash that looked like it were going to have much worse consequences than it did. Hunter Sales, Cheyenne Harmon, and Austin Politelli should be back on the gate after failing virus protocols last week, as well as Carson Brown who took a handlebar to the mouth in his heat race, but they found his tooth, stitched him up good, and he should be good to go for Saturday in Oakland. No word on if or when Mitchell Falk will return after the team announced his absence last Saturday. Two all-star changes in each class, as the all-star will now be determined each week by who is within the top eight in points. Obviously, Colt Nichols loses his status after his injury, as well as Nate Thrasher becoming double eligible after his struggles in the main event. The 450 class sees Anderson and Ferrandis become double eligible for Oakland as Chase Sexton and Joey Savacci slide up into the top eight. All right, onto your Oakland picks. I have three guys to target, one to avoid, and a high handicap guy for you gamblers out there, starting with the little class and working our way up. The all-star that I want you to look at is Seth Hamaker. He was fortunate that Mosman and Shimoda both had trouble on their first lap and were no threat to catching him. That led to an easy podium for the second year rider. But the thing about Seth that I'm interested in is his starts. He just barely missed out on the whole shot and was actually ahead of Christian Craig for a brief time in Anaheim. Last season, his 5.5 average start position was third best behind only Craig and Mosman. And in this class, getting out front early is so key to keeping you from being tangled up in someone else's mess. The rider this week that I do not want you to look at is veteran stalwart Chris Blos. The AJE Motul Gas Gas rider sports a two handicap, and unfortunately that is just not enough to score any real points in this class this week. Last season, in an injury depleted field, he only finished in the top 12 in half of his main events with an average finish of exactly 12. I'm sure this season is going to have a main or two where he rips a great start and rides well inside the top 10, but it's just not consistent, and I don't think there's enough upside here to offset what would happen if he goes down with just a two handicap. On the 450 side, the clear-cut best pick for an all-star is Malcolm Stewart. After a 7th place finish, Mookie stays at a 6 handicap, which is a very generous given how fast he was all day. In 2021, he finished in the top 7 in 60% of main events, 
with only a single DNF, which is one of the best marks in the class. And after his run-in with Marv last weekend, and he's still getting up to finish top 7, I think his safety net is taut enough to guarantee decent points. This week's video features two high handicap heroes, as quite frankly, there just aren't a lot of good low risk picks in either class for Oakland. The high handicap hero of the round, given to a rider with a handicap of 10 or more that I think has a realistic chance to score massive points this weekend, if you're the type of person that likes to sweat out a little LCQ for a big payout. The first is much lower risk. I picked him at an 8 last week, and I would pick him again if I could. It's Justin Bogle. The HEP Suzuki rider had an average finish of 14.3 last season with every single main event finish coming inside the top 20 with a season high of 9th. Bogle is known historically for his great starts, but the numbers here don't really show it with just an average of 12.4 in 9 main events last year, but he's a veteran guy that knows how to get it done. He just needs to stay out of other people's trouble, and he comes straight through the heat all day. I am once again sitting here asking you to look at Hunter Sales for the Triple H this weekend. He missed last week after failing virus protocol, and we can't hold that against him. His handicap inexplicably went up for some reason this weekend, so he's even better of a pick this week than last. I know last year's class was weak, but you can't scoff at an average finish inside the top 14 with a 13 handicap. The PRMX Kawasaki-backed rider did miss two main events last season and DNF a main, but with a 13, the DNF means nothing here and he could be someone poised for maximum points. The 250 FFL picture is pretty cut and dry. I think it's either Christian or Vince until further notice. The distance from the gate to the finish line is startling low. Just a rhythm 180, whoops, 180, and there it is. So there's really no time for anyone but the whole shot to pick this up. Nod to Craig though, as he is the best in those whoops, but it's ultimately going to come down to the jump alone. The 450 side feels the same as last week. Kenny is the favorite as long as AC remains banged up. Sexton was pretty close to pulling it off, but pretty close doesn't get you 15 points. Take the easy play here with Roxon, or just keep your points to yourself. It's going to be a chilly California evening in Oakland Saturday night. A high of just 60 during the day means it's going to be low 50s when the gate drops at 7 p.m. local time and into the 40s by the time checkers fly. Luckily, no precipitation or major wind concerns, so the racing will be great. I'll just be glad to be watching it from the couch rather than shivering it out in the Oakland Coliseum. The race day schedule is your typical West Coast fair. Those of us on the East Coast are going to have a late one with race day live beginning at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. local time in Oakland. Rotomoto Patreon supporters are the first to receive the cheat sheets as I post them to our private Discord as soon as each class wraps up and then to the Patreon at wide around 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific. The standard cheat sheet hits the general public on the Pulp MX Fantasy Twitter and Instagram shortly after that, somewhere between 8.30 and 9 p.m. Eastern, then picks lock and the gates drop at 10. After the race, feel free to join me over on my own channel for the Rotomoto post-race program immediately following the podium ceremony where I talk directly with you and other Supercross fans live on camera about the racing, the drama, the fallout, and of course, the fantasy results as they become available. Before I show you my early team for Oakland, I want to talk about Max's Tire coming on for all 17 rounds so I can deliver these videos for you. You know Max's Tire. You know their MXST Tire designed by the king of Supercross and my all-time favorite rider, Jeremy McGrath. It's the newest and most advanced tire in the Maxxis MX lineup featuring all new tread pattern, compound, and composition to provide the stability, predictability, and traction the upper tiers of motocross demand. The entire SGB Honda team runs Maxxis on their race bikes, including Pulp MX show favorites and on-again, off-again rivals, Alex Ray and Kate Clayson, available at your local retailer and also at motorsport.com. My Thursday morning team consists of Seth Hamaker as my 250 all-star. I also have high handicap hero Hunter Sales penciled in at a 13 until I see his qualifying times. Nate Thrasher at a 1, hoping his mediocre qualifying and lap times were just an A1 thing. And top 10 A1 finisher Dominique Thury at a 5. On the 450 side, I have Malcolm Stewart locked in as my all-star. Dylan Ferrandis at a 1 after losing all-star status with a rough opening weekend. Shane McElrath at a 7 after a strong start last weekend, and I'm probably not going to stand behind this one, but I wanted to show my support for Alex Martin at a 14. It's a bit risky for me this early in the season, but I think he could still count for big points. If you want a chance to win this number plate, the very one Adam C. and Cirolo ran in the main event at A1, autographed by the man himself, 
consider joining the Rotomoto Patreon. For just $1 per week, you support me immensely and help make it possible for me to make more content like this, but you are also entered to win race, used, and autograph memorabilia from your favorite riders and fantasy darlings. Right now, there are less than 50 people in the Patreon circle, so your odds of winning something like this every month are great, and you don't even have to be good at fantasy to do it. Sign up for the Insider tier for an additional entry into the giveaways, as well as an exclusive podcast where I talk fantasy stats on every rider in the field, as well as the enhanced cheat sheets that come out every Saturday. Link for that is in the description below. And don't forget to follow at Fantasy and RotoXMoto on both Instagram and Twitter for injury updates as the weekend rolls on, qualifying info, and stats and banner throughout the race itself. Thanks as always for watching the Pulp MX Fantasy Show presented by Maxis. My name is Donnie. May your chizzes chiz this weekend and remember to have fun. Good luck, y'all.